Okay, so when we're working with oscillatory motion, it becomes really easy to think of it as motion along a circle. Okay, so I'm going to draw down here at the bottom our spring and a block moving on a frictionless table, and it's oscillating back and forth from here. We're going to call this negative um, A and positive A. Okay, it'll go to between those two points. It's, it's amplitude in the positive direction and it's amplitude in the negative direction. Now if we think about this as motion along a circle, this horizontal motion would be the cosine. That's why we have that cosine. So I'm going to rewrite that equation. X of t will be equal to our amplitude times the cosine of what we're calling the phase, which is two parts. The time dependent part plus however we start our phase constant. Okay, so let's draw a circle that has the same diameter, which is that was a bad circle, forgive me. But it's got the same diameter um, as our total displacement from minimum to maximum. So on this circle we have, we have our origin here, and we just translate this axis up to there. So this point right here becomes positive A, and this point right here becomes negative A. Okay. And so, if we start with it stretched, okay, that means we're right here, and it's going to go this way. So on our circle, we always assume the motion is going... Uh, the motion is going counter, or, yeah, counterclockwise. We have counterclockwise motion all the time. So if we think about this, uh, this motion as being a, a something on a, a circle moving counterclockwise, then as it moves counterclockwise, its horizontal component approaches zero. So as it moves this way, the horizontal component, component approaches zero. And that's what the block would do. It would be over here and gets pulled towards zero. Once it gets to zero, it's going to overshoot and keep going. So as it continues to go, now our, our um, uh, displacement is now in the negative and growing in the negative direction. And then it's going to get all the way compressed. Okay, And it's going to start to go, continuing counterclockwise. Since it's totally compressed, now that means it's going to be pushed back towards equilibrium. So now we're getting our horizontal motion back this way. And as it gets to zero, it's going to overshoot again and keep going that way, which gives our horizontal motion again that way. Until we get back to A, where it stops and repeats that process. And so this circular motion helps us to understand the uh, uh, horizontal motion. And particularly, it allows us to be able to say, okay, well, what if I don't start at A and start moving this way? What if I start, I get this thing going, and then I start it when it's at the center, moving that way? Well, then we can say, okay, my time, my initial time is now right here. Okay, so I'm now here. I'm going to draw a new picture. 